I just received the camshaft. Welcome back to the channel. This is going to be an experiment. I'm taking a huge risk here, uh, spending too much time at home on eBay and looking for parts for the Camaro and what to do with it. I want to do a cam swap on this car, you know, since I got the car back and I've been looking at the most economical way to do it. Every which way you look at it, it's about a thousand dollars no matter which way you look at it, between valve springs and all the components, camshaft and that goes with it. I came across, and this is, you, you, you guys are going to hate me for this or love me for this or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the comments that are just going to probably, whatever. I just received the camshaft. It's the cheapest camshaft that I've ever seen in, in my life for a roller cam. Supposedly, I spoke to the owner of the company. This is a factory billet core. It's a reground. Now I've researched the company. They've been around since 1979. Um, some of you who probably know what I'm already talking about, but just for the people that don't know, uh, regrounds have been around forever. People have been doing it forever. Um, and you have mixed reviews out there. And I couldn't find any definitive answer. So I figured the motor that's in this car is a refreshed uh, rebuild, stock rebuild heads, you know, all that kind of stuff. The only thing it has on it from my other previous videos is a tune and headers. That's it, and a cold air intake. So I figured I'd give it a shot. And it's a huge gamble. I have spent who knows how long researching this particular company. I've had mixed reviews on the Camaro Z28 forms and the Corvette forms, so on and so forth. Then I reached out to the company and I spoke to the owner and he had guaranteed me that this is what I need. These are factory billet steel core cams. And again, I'm not a camshaft expert, but I'm just going by what he said. And I, t I explained to him what I was doing with the car and what I wanted. And he guaranteed me that I should have no problems. There is no the welding, as they say, on, on this camshaft. These are all factory billet cores that are reground to specifications to, I believe, a comp cam of some sorts. I know the specs of the cam, but I'm going to do an unboxing. I haven't looked at it yet, and you're going to come and take the ride with me. And we're going to see if this is any good because I have gone, looked through videos, I've gone through the chat rooms, and I just can't get a definitive answer. So I said, well, let's make a video about it. Okay, here we go. From what I can see, it's boxed extremely well, there's no damages, so let's go. Let's do this in real time so you can see what I'm seeing. Smells like a camshaft. We'll get into this in a minute. We're just going to see how this looks. Wrapped really well, that's all I mean. I'm inspecting this cam with a fine tooth comb. Looking at the gear, I mean this cam looks brand new. I mean looks brand spanking new. Look 
looking at every lobe, looking at the cuts, I mean, this cam has not been welded or anything along those lines. What I'm doing is I'm running my finger along the, the lobes to see if I see any weirdness. Slip it around. It's got the right pin in it and it's got the right barrel drilling. And it's got laser etched. I doubt that's going to come in. It's what he says it was. Quick tech tip. Tech tip. Quick tech tip. Uh, and this applies to LT1 owners um, from 94, depending on the time of the motor was made, and up to 97. Um, and this is the cars that are running the vented OptiSpark. Not every roller cam from 1987 OEM roller cam will work in the LT1 engines. There's two factors. There's the barrel right here for the uh, way this is cut right here. The dowel pin and also the hole within the barrel. Now, some of the earlier roller camshafts, and all the camshafts will fit in the motor physically and all that kind of stuff. That's not a problem. But when it comes to the hole here, this is where the uh, vented OptiSparks sit in there. The earlier style or the OEM cams, uh, uh, you know, with the Chevy small box that didn't have OptiSparks, this hole is not as, it's not as um, big, it's smaller. So you're going to put the cam in, realize that the OptiSpark's not going to go on there, and realize you need to drill this out. That's the biggest difference between an LT1 cam from 94 and up, or the or if you have a vented OptiSpark, and the length of the dowel pin. Most times, if it's shorter, you can extend it, or if it's too long, you can cut it off, depending on if you have a non-vented or vented OptiSpark. This is not really a big issue. You could always get a dowel pin, but these are the two things that makes the difference. And most of the fuel injection, um, Camshafts do not have a fuel pump lobe. This is something else. I'm already impressed with it. Um, I've heard horror stories. Well, a couple people claiming that they wiped out the cam. The cam fell apart as far as within the lobe areas. But when I've looked at the pictures and tried to do follow up with the person who wrote the article, it looks like the the lobe was dented or dinged or the, the, the roller lift it fell apart so it's kind of hard to tell online what people are saying and how the motor is built I mean it all goes down to who's putting the thing together who's inspecting the parts but I am looking at this this thing looks brand spanking new I would never guess that this was a reground cam I'm not sure if he starts with brand new cams and then regrounds the lobes to specifications for like a high-performance version or what he does and then I'll go into the different types of cams that he offers or the company offers but I mean it's got the right gear on there they, they this gear looks brand new I mean brand new this can't be a used cam wow let's get into the paperwork this is what came in the box. Okay. I'll take a good picture of this, but I figured I'd just print out what they're claiming on this cam card. I'll read it out. 
Now, I didn't want to go too much of a aggressive cam, so this is not the most wildest cam. Okay, so I'm just going to read off the cam specifications, and this is probably not going to come through on the video. Basic operation RPM, 22 to 5800 RPM. Intake duration at 0.50 inch lift is 230. Exhaust duration at 50 at 236. Duration intake duration 282. Advertised exhaust duration 288. Lift with factory rock arms is 510 on the intake and 520 on the exhaust. Of course, we can bump that up um, with 1.6 rockers if we want to. Lobe separation is at 110 degrees. Valve spring required, yes. It says grind number. I'm going to look this up. CSXR282HR-10. Whatever that means from comp, I'll find out. Okay, after looking at what the paperwork was given to me, and it seems to be that it's a comp 08432-8. I'll give you the, the grind number again which is C, S as in Sam, X as in Harry, R as in Robert, 282, HR-10. And it is, you can't but go by with the comp energy cam uh, of the actual part number for this particular LT1, because I'm not sure if it has the, again, what I explained, the barrel hole cut and the longer dial pin, because this looks, from what, I, from what I see from like Summit Racing, this is cut for a, standard OEM roller cam engine for that does not use the Oppie spark. So that's the main difference of this. So in the next video I'm going to go over all the components that are going to be matching for this camshaft and then give you a dollar figure for all for everything. Stay tuned. Talk to you later. Bye.